Hi everyone! Today we're going to be learning about Circus canadensis L, otherwise known as the Eastern Redbud Tree, or just Redbud. Now, Redbud is a small deciduous tree or shrub that grows to be about 12 meters tall. However, it does stick around 6 to 9 meters tall. It also has wide-spreading branches and it typically has a twisted trunk. Now, this species is widely planted as an ornamental tree due to its beautiful pink flowers and heart-shaped leaves. Additionally, redbud was used by the Native Americans to treat things like whooping cough, congestion, uh, fever, and vomiting. Now, if we take a look at a distribution map of redbud, we'll see that it is native to the central and eastern United States. This species isn't terribly aggressive, but it certainly has its moments. If you're like most people and want to add this beautiful tree to your landscape, then hardiness zones 4 through 9 are suitable for growing it. When it comes to redbud's natural environment, it typically prefers areas that are well-drained. Some examples of habitats it prefers are ravines, old farmland, and forests. Redbud can tolerate both alkaline and acidic soils, as well as full sun and shade, but it is picky on soil moisture. Now, there are many ways we can go about identifying a redbud tree, but let's go ahead and start out with the twig and bark. The twig of a redbud is typically very thin, brown to black in color, smooth, has an alternate bud arrangement, zigzags, and is covered in lenticels. This twig actually doesn't have an apical bud, it has all lateral buds. The lateral bud that is at the end of the twig is known as a false terminal bud. Now if we take a look at the bark, we can see that it is a reddish brown to gray color and is scaly. Now here's a photo of a branch from a redbud tree during the summertime. We can clearly see those leaves alternating. Now if we zoom in on the leaves, we'll see that the leaves are simple, heart-shaped, have a pointed tip, as well as a long slender petiole, and five to nine veins that radiate palmately from the base of the leaf. Additionally, the underside of the leaf is slightly paler than the top. Now the flowers of redbud, which are the main attraction of the tree, bloom in late March to early May once the tree is at least four to six years old. When the tree does bloom, it produces clusters of two to eight pink pea-like flowers that appear before the tree even has its leaves. These flowers can even be found on the trunk of the tree. Each flower has a dark purple tubular calyx and five petals. As mentioned, the flowers are very pea-like and have an upper petal called the banner two upper lateral petals called the wings, and two lower petals that form a projecting keel that contain the reproductive parts of the flower. Now each flower also has 10 stamen and a carpal. These flowers are pollinated by many different types of bees and butterflies. After pollination takes place, a green pod about 4 to 10 centimeters long will form, and around September to October the pods turn brown. These pods can stay on the tree through the winter, which can be quite helpful for identifying this species. Each pod has four to 12 flat brown seeds in it, which are eaten by many birds like the bobwhite quail and cardinals. When the animals eat the seeds, they help to disperse them, but also wind is a disperser for these seeds as well. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the Eastern Redbud tree, otherwise known as Circus canadensis with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.